Good afternoon and welcome to St. Uh, Ambrose. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot what church I was at for a moment. Um, our intention this afternoon is for Joanne Johnson. Our opening song is number 650, River of Glory. <laughs> also between the masses to continue celebrating in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all Amen. my dear sisters and brothers let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
who are prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their room. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malachiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebek-Melech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault and all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebed-Melech the Cushite to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, Lord, come to my aid. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, 
Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish that it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized. And how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided. Two, three against two, and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to the correct time. <laughs> so the story of uh, Jeremiah at this point in his life is that Jerusalem is under siege by the Babylonian army. No food or water is coming into the city and the situation is desperate. Jeremiah speaks for God. King Zedekiah is to blame for the situation. Zedekiah made an oath with God as witness to be a loyal vassal of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. But now breaking his oath he has made another alliance with Babylon's competitor, Egypt. Jeremiah says this to Zedekiah himself, to the military, and to everyone. And so the princes come again, uh, come against Jeremiah and throw him into that muddy cistern where he will die. 
There is no food there either. Jeremiah is God's servant first and last. And so he must speak out. He must witness to the truth of the situation. And therefore he finds himself first thrown into the muddy cistern to die. And then he finds himself raised from that sure death that he would face there when God inspires Ebed Melech to intercede with the king. And the king caves into him. The author of the letter to the Hebrews in the section just before the section we read today has just made a long list of people whose lives have provided testimony to what happens to people when they truly put faith and confidence in God. Hebrews doesn't mention Jeremiah, but it could have. The stories told of the many witnesses are many and vary. Each one illustrates that God, trust in God is the path to life, even though it may very well be through much difficulty. Edith Stein was born in 1891, the last of 11 children born to her parents in Jerusalem. Her father died when she was only two years old, leaving her mother with a business to run and 11 children to raise. Small wonder that she, although a devout woman herself, was not able to devote herself to teaching her children to practice their Jewish faith. At the age of 14, Edith decided to stop praying. By the time she finished school, she was calling herself an atheist. Edith was a very bright student. She studied in very good schools. Under very good teachers, she met lots of people, some of them Christians. One of the several experiences that made deep impression on her took place when Edith went into a Catholic church near the university where she was teaching. And while she was there, a woman came in on her way home from the market. Edith saw her put down her basket and kneel in prayer. She knew that when her Protestant acquaintances went to church and when her Jewish friends went to synagogue, it was for a service. But this woman had come to have a little heart to heart with God, with Jesus. This simple act of faith made a profound impression on Edith. In 1922, at the age of 31, Edith was baptized Catholic. She wanted to join a community of Carmelite nuns, but the people in charge thought she, would, she should wait, that she should mature in faith and practice. In 1934, she was admitted to the convent at Cologne where she made her final profession four years later with the new name, Teresa Benedicta Acruce, Teresa Blessed of the Cross. Within six months, as the Nazi campaign against the Jews became clear to the whole world, her community sent her to a convent in the Netherlands there she lived until the Nazi invasion of Holland. She and many other Jewish Christians were arrested. And in August of 1942, she died in a gas chamber at Auschwitz. I tell her story here because her decision to become Catholic was completely incomprehensible to her mother. And because the last visit to her mother's house 
the day before she entered the convent, was the last time her mother communicated with her. The mother thought of the daughter as dead to her. Jesus says, there is a fire. How long, how I long to see it blaze. There is a baptism I must receive. How I anguish until it is finished. For Luke, the fire represents the work of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism represents the death and resurrection movement that is a necessary part of choosing to be faithful to God. In our own lives, <clears throat> we face the decision again and again, even daily, whether to live as members of the risen Christ or not, to pursue the goal of the race as the letter of the letter to the Hebrews names it, or to settle for a walk in the park, to conduct our life as part of the new creation, or to practice business as usual. We have this decision to listen and respond to the voice of the shepherd, or to attend to the voice that counsels Take it easy. Jesus calls us, no less than God called Jeremiah, or Jesus called Edith, to follow him, to run the risk of faith, the risk of believing in the promises of God. Each day we are called to answer. Let us pray to choose well. Let us now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was in the of the Virgin Mary and became like us. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism to the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now let us present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord.
for, for Pope Francis and church leaders. May they be examples of God's abundant love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, for an end to war and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Monsignor Hazard, in thanksgiving for him and God's continued blessings on him as he celebrates his golden jubilee, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those in our hospitals and nursing facilities, and for all caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and those in need of financial support, and for refugees, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all who mourn, those in our book of intentions and those requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joanne Johnson, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing number 394, Here I Am, Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the place of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to, ga to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to, to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, <clears throat> that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom of power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ Jesus.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
We have a few announcements this evening. We will be having a church and classroom cleanup day this coming Saturday, August 20th at 10 a.m. We need many helpers to clean and brighten up the church and to dust and clean up the classrooms for the new year. Lunch will be provided. Please call the office to volunteer. Next weekend, August 20th and 21st, we will have a special blessing for our college students at all of the masses. Please see the bulletin for details. The Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is on Monday, August 15th. It is not a holy day of obligation this year. Please register your children for our religious education program by September 1, either online or on our website either online on our website or by calling the office. The Sunday by Sunday scripture study group restarts on Tuesday, September 13th. Please see the bulletin for details. The RCIA program begins on Sunday, September 25th after the 9 a.m. Mass. If you or someone you know is interested in joining the Catholic Church or is returning to the Catholic Church, Please call the office of Eileen Rutten, the RCIA coordinator, to register for that program. Thank you all for helping Monsignor Mike celebrate his golden jubilee as a priest. Have a blessed week. Thank you very much. Uh, so on the last announcement there, so I just want to thank uh, all of you for helping Monsignor Mike or make this day a success. It was a, it was a beautiful one, uh, the most beautiful I've ever been. So, and we had a good representation from St. Ambrose, about 60, about 60 of us were there, which was wonderful. So, I just want to tell you how uh, I, I was connected with uh, Monsignor Mike. 24 years ago, he happened to come to Kenya. Then I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in high school and I was still, uh, I was still thinking, uh, should I be a priest or should I not or should I just go? Then he came to, uh, to my home parish and I actually uh, served in his masses and uh, also travel. Then soon I, I came back to the United States and uh, they, they, they produced a CD at St. Joseph and all the proceeds went to the, the high school I was. So it helped to build a dormitory for us, a modern one, where we could have a bathroom within the <laughs> building. So. And uh, all of us were excited. The students who were there was no there was no 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 much equipment like here. So mixing the cement and the and the ballast and it was the students who were mixing the spade. And it was it was one pro uh, dormitory. So before I before I finished my high school, I happened to sleep in uh, in that dormitory. <laughs> then again. They came over uh, with Bishop Bradley, uh, and they, they, they just, it was just, it's just a coincidence. They came to the parish I was. Now I was preparing to be a deacon. And I had, had prepared as uh, people for confirmation. There were about 400 from the entire parish. So I was preparing to be a deacon. I was also teaching catechism and preparing these, uh, these people for confirmation. So there were 400 candidates. So lucky enough, we were there. Then Bishop Bradley and Bishop Dominic. So the two bishops uh, made, uh, made the work easy. So I did know that uh, some years uh, to come, I would come over uh, to Kalamazoo. And I came over here. Then I was moved here, and then he was moved here. <laughs> and now we, we live together. <laughs> and uh, more than that, he was born exactly the same year as my father. Aww. So I take him just like my father. <laughs> yeah, so may 
God bless you. Well, God bless you too, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> For that reason, I think Sue has something <laughs> which will all participate. Well, and we are so very blessed at St. Ambrose to have two priests who walk together as father and son, but <laughs> demonstrate that loving kindness to each other every single week. We are very grateful. And when I asked Monsignor Mike, what's your favorite song? He gave me two, two songs of thanksgiving and praise to God. That's the kind of priest he has always been, never seeking attention for himself. And we see that exactly em emulated in our dear Father Albert. So let us join together in singing number 611 for the beauty of the earth. Keychain with his image too, but the keychains are not here tonight, they'll be available tomorrow. So, tomorrow, between the masses, we'll have we'll continue the celebration at the, uh, at the hall. There, we'll have a lot of goodies, <laughs> yeah, plus all those gifts. So, don't miss it. <laughs> Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through this sacrament, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that con conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 21. Now thank we all our God. <laughs>